Hello YouTube, welcome to the Common Investor channel. Uh, this is your boy Joe. So I'm just here, I'm going to talk to you about my um, current investment journey. So I don't think I've released a video out in about two or three months. Essentially just been busy with work and um, new place, uh, just the whole COVID-19 scenario basically. So uh, yeah, I just had some time this evening to um, to get a video out there. So uh, this is my investor, obviously, uh, just I guess recap. I said uh, from free trade, I've moved over to trading to one two, and um, I maxed out my ISA, so started investing in my um, invest account in my ISA, and um, essentially this ISA, I started putting money for this around uh, August 2020. Uh, so I've been able to grow it from that to about yeah eight thousand six hundred and forty four pounds at the moment um i'm not too excited about it because well obviously i'm up 21 percent and stuff i'm not too excited about it because the well it is like my yolo account essentially um this to me i feel there's quite a few high risk stuff here and literally they can just like drop the next day basically because you're they're more like you know it's a long-term play don't get me wrong but they're not like they're not proven companies yet. They just it's all about the whole EV and charging points optimism. Um, so as, as of today, I've invested uh so just over seven thousand in this invest account. I'm up twenty one point ninety percent, which is pretty good. Um, considering I've just started investing in this account in August, um, so I didn't really capitalize from you know catching the market at the bottom in March. So it just tells you how crazy the market has been basically this year. So um, yeah, I'll just start by talking about me. So being global is basically um, a charge a charging point company. Um, essentially, what they're I think they the base there is on renewable energy. So they use solar energy to to charge um, like uh, electric vehicles. And uh, I think the reason I've out of all your other companies that could, like Blink Charging, I'm not too interested in that. Uh, but I'm, I like this because they actually have contracts in place already. Um, and I think the deployment for this is a lot easier or a lot more straightforward compared to, you know, like SBE. I've got SBE as well because that's literally, I think, the biggest one. Because we've got SBE and we've got charge points in the UK. We've got, uh, which is basically, I think they've got more charging points um, across the world compared to any other um company so they're, they're quite far reaching and they're planning on expanding a bit more anyways i digress um beam global um charge point as a as a charging state they, they make charging stations with uh solar panels used for charging cars they got contracts to i think a government contract as well so that's pretty good i mean they're up 42 percent uh well i'm up 42 percent rather on that so that's quite good um cig knows uh um What's it called? A SPAC, basically. That's going to merge with a company called Arriva, not Arriva, <laughs> Arrival. And obviously, there's a lot of hype be behind Arrival, but you know, they have some you know, like temporary contracts in place. I think with UPS and stuff, they have partnerships with K um, Kia, Hyundai, which is basically the same company. Because uh, I think Kia owns Hyundai. Uh, and essentially, they they have looks like I've seen if you go to their websites and watch a few, few few videos about them, they look like quite a promising company, and they look like they got their heads on right. So, you know, you in this kind of scenarios, you basically you're not really you can't I guess you're not really betting on the company itself, so to speak. You're kind of just betting on the um on the management to to basically pull off what they say they're gonna pull off. At such early stages in the company's life, so I'm up for um, I'm just about thirty percent on that. Um, fully transim transmin I think acquisitions another SPAC. So this is one that's rumored to um to be merging with PaySafe, which is a you know um what's it called e payment platform. Um, and people have been comparing it to like Square and uh PayPal. Yeah, but this company has this pay safe has been around for quite a long time. So you're wondering why, uh, you know, it's been around before Square. So I think it's, if that's my only worry, basically, that, you know, if it's been around for that long, why isn't it as competitive as Square is right now, to be honest? 
But you know, they do pretty much something similar to what Pay and the Square and PayPal do. Um, so yeah, we'll just see how that goes. I'm also trying to look more into pay safe just to just to you know decide how I'm gonna approach that. I might just end up selling this and just put my money in PayPal anyways. Uh, Neo, everyone knows about Neo, so EVs. Um, this was down for a bit. Um, was, I think it was down about 9%, where it's come back up again. And I think it's just going to keep going up. I think the reason it went down was because of the whole China-American China problem again. New um, is an electric bike maker. So I'll bring this up. So this actually had, I took some um, gains further up there. It was about $34, I think. And it's dropped to quite a good point now. And it looks like it's uh, starting to go back up again. I mean, the earnings, they had earnings, earnings basically were saying that, um, what did the earnings say again? So, yeah, so they had, they, had, they had the revenue increase, but it wasn't just, ex it, was, it wasn't as much as um, inve investors and also the analysts were expecting, so it just dropped because of that. But I mean, we're in the time of COVID, so, you know, it's, it's quite hard to grow your business and stuff. You have businesses shutting down everywhere. So I was quite happy with it, and to me, it was an opportunity to kind of build up. Uh, so I just sold, and um, I've basically just built it up. My average was about, I think, 19. So obviously, I've been averaging up. That's why my average has gone up to, um, yeah, to you about 24, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so that was nice. Uh, CO Gene Therapies um, is a biotech company, um, small um, early stage biotech company. They're working on making a uh, cure for Parkinson's and the second stage um, a clinical trial. See, the data is pretty good. If you look, it popped quite a bit actually. I think at the time I was about 30, 60% up, uh, 40, maybe 40% up, I can't remember, but it popped quite a bit and it's dropped, recovered back down. So I've been watching this, um, it's actually put a bit more money in there. If you look at it, it's been on a st steady increase um, since it dropped, basically. So um, I got in at about there, yep. Um, so yeah, um, obviously it's not a company that's uh, making money or anything like that. And you're losing money, but, but it's getting better. It's, it's getting, it's gotten better over the uh, past few years. And um, they're getting closer and closer to um, actually releasing a product. So we'll see how that goes. It's a risky play. You know. I said it's a yellow one. Taiwan Semiconductor is not a risky play. Um, the time I bought this, I didn't uh, have any more. F I couldn't transfer any more funds to my ISA. So basically got it here. Uh, mine is done pretty well. Uh, 22.79%, um, which is pretty good. Takada Pharmaceuticals. Um, this dropped... This is basically this graph is not it's not correct, but it's dropped quite a bit actually from its like highest point, and um, I think they kind of it seems like there's a restructuring going on for the company where they want to drive the increase of revenue, and I think this year as well they reported numbers and there was a quite a big revenue increase, which is why this jump happened. So um, I just waited for it to dip for a little bit. It did dip, and I bought it, and um, it looks like it's a uh, and we're forming a new um, support, maybe. I don't know. But we'll see. But we'll see. Well, I have a feeling it's still going to go a bit higher. And ARK Invest have also been buying a lot of the company. Uh, Thermo Fisher, same situation. It dipped as well. Um, as you can see, Thermo Fisher doesn't really dip that often. Um, so this was quite a good dip. And I was got in on the dip on Thermo Fisher. So that's it for the Invest accounts. Um, yeah, it's doing pretty good, pretty happy. So yeah, this I'm I basically don't want anything more than ten shares in this. So I'm gonna keep it below ten ten investments rather or ten stocks. Um I just try and concentrate here, um, uh, which is different from my other strategy that I'm taking for my ICER, which is more kind of long term. It's as always well a longer term approach than this. This I'll definitely be buying and selling, as you can see. If you go to my history, um, see if I've been buying and selling stuff. So I've made about two grand on this, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, I've done a bit of trading on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So this is my um yeah my ISA account. So right now I've invested at uh, just over twenty grand, um, up by eleven percent, which is pretty good. And uh, yeah, things are looking good for this one. So yeah, this is definitely obviously um, I've been investing in this since yeah since April. So it's just been a uh, I've had my ups and downs. I've never really so I think at this point in time I was really over diversified. So you wouldn't see or like I was having stocks that were like twenty percent up and but you wouldn't really see that within a portfolio because I was I had about a hundred stocks in here. So uh a what's it called? Um a subscriber did make that comment and uh, I, I took it on board. And I looked at it and uh, what I've done, I've reduced my holdings to 37 holdings from 100. So I sold quite a bit. And I think from a history point of view, yeah, I'm, basically I'm up a thousand. I was actually down 500 at the time because of Wirecard. So I've recouped that loss and added more into it. So I guess you can see I've made like a thousand six hundred or something. But yeah, so far so good, it's looking good. Um yeah, and you can see my biggest holding is um Tattoo Chef and you got some other companies there. So rather than going through them individually, I'll just go through them using the pies. So um I've got uh, five pies, uh, five pies, yeah. This one I created recently, it's called um, Catching a Falling Knife. So it's basically stocks that, um, so Avon is a UK stock, Future is a UK stock, and that's the Euro uh, ETF. So these were just ones I saw that dropped quite a bit, and we can go to Avon Rubber. Um, and this literally dropped quite a bit. I think there was a delay in deliveries. And if you can see, it's um, it's gone up a lot. It literally, this is one of those stocks that just kept on going up. And it was very hard to catch it on a, you know, on an actual fall. So I've just been watching it, and um, they, there were some delays in deliveries, and that dropped quite a lot. So loaded, loaded into it. If we just drop a bit more or stay at this level, I'm still going to load a bit more into that. So um, it's one I wanted to build a position in. So it looks like a good opportunity to do that now. Um, future um, similar situation. Um, I think they wanted to buy a company, and sometimes when you know these companies try to buy other company, I think we'll buy Go Compare or something. Um, their stock price just tends to drop, and that's what's happened there. So, you know, it's not really anything wrong with the company per se. Um, yeah. So they these are just my typical one. So it's divided into um dividend growth, dividend income, um growth, speculation. So yeah, catching knife one is just to remind me that I need to put money into those. Not necessarily not necessarily the um the ETF. The ETF I'll probably I don't really want to hold ETFs in this account to be honest with you. Um I've got like a SIP account where they're like literally funds and stuff, so um, I just I rather just keep funds or or like funds or all the fun type things in there. Um, I just get rid of all the tears. But I, I'll this Euro one I'm just keeping it because um, I actually like the ETF. Um, it's only got about fifty holdings in there, so it's not stupidly diversified. And um, yeah, I think I got at a good time. So from dividend growth, um, this has got companies, you know, some UK company, Intertech, um, you know, it's kind of like a healthcare medical device type, um, not healthcare, yeah, healthcare testing um, type thing. Um, uh, Skywalk Solutions, just a play on 5G, Experian, you know, credit checks and all that stuff. Uh, game Workshop. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a game, you know, board game type thing. Um, Johnson, Marty, it's quite an interesting company as well. If you're interested in, like, renewable energy companies, like, um, I think Series Power, um, maybe ITM as well, then I think it's good to look at John Marty as well. It's one of those ones that are under, that's underlooked, but they work closely with these companies. So, um, they're still on, they're obviously quite down at the moment. So, they might be worth having a look at for you. So, for me, rather than, I used to have Series Power before, 
uh so it's gone up quite a bit so i sold it off and um i'll be looking to build a position in johnson marty because i feel like they indirectly benefit from series power being um it's like an indirect play basically so how am i going to have american tower another 5g play um have you group it's down 14 percent, but it's not really i mean i think they reissued some shares um, just to raise some capital to buy a company that's why it's dropped quite a bit um yeah it's just a good buying opportunity i don't know if it's a good one but it's just diluted shares essentially so um yeah that's why i'm down 14 percent. it's not really anything crazy um or anything wrong with the company um so i really alex starts up eight percent and actually it's another um I guess healthcare, um, what's it called, equipment type play. Um, so that's doing good. So yeah, all these companies, they all pay dividends, but the yields are pretty low. They're like, you know, 1% to 2%. I think the highest is probably RELX, which is about just probably 2 point something. Um, but they do grow their dividends pretty well, so um, on a yearly basis. So I basically kept them there. They grow them from about like, I think, 8 to like, I don't know, 15%, so that's pretty good. Dividend income, uh, essentially, it's mostly UK companies just because I want my dividends to be my, yeah, cause to be mainly from, from UK companies because you, if you get it from an American company, you do have a 15% tax you have to pay. Um, but for the sake of monthly payers, like uh, realty income, that's in there. And also looking at putting airtel because they have a good dividend yield and store capital basically got it at a good price so i um, just kept it in there but everything else you know it's um, just companies that have got high yields um got this uh, php got out about four percent uh bae about four percent uh ig it's a good really good company actually for what the dividend play is about 5.8 percent yield uh, sentiment is about six percent yield or something. That's that's pretty good. They're good in general. So I think that's about another. It's a good yield. So yeah, all of these. I'll say I have an average yield of about six point something percent in here. So um, so yeah, that's pretty good for me. Um, yeah. So I'm not too fussed. About, so this is one of those pies. I'm really not too fussed about you know capital appreciation um if anything i just want them to keep paying their dividends and that's it <laughs> basically so i'm not too forced about you know if this goes into the red or whatever if it goes into the red i'm actually happy about it because then the yields are actually better um so the growth one uh yeah so go to the growth so yeah we've got tesla you know typical stuff up 52 percent amazon is pretty much just been stable for me Roku, you know, 43%, PayPal, 20 So, yeah, just growth, baby. Everything's just good, yeah. Uh, Fiverr, 30, Fasty, 30, um, Salesforce. I had it before. I sold it when I was up about 20%, and I bought back in after the drop. Um, Alibaba is just down. Uh, I think they've been having some bad press recently. And Synopsys, um, pretty good company. Uh, I almost sold, I had more holdings in it. I sold some of it off to invest in another company. Um, I didn't think, then in a couple of days later, at least he just jumped like 7%. So, uh, but it's, it was one I like to hold in my um, in my growth. It has a similar model to like Adobe and um, I forgot to the other company. Uh, yeah, similar um, and also desk. It's basically just they do the same thing as Autodesk, but I think they just this is just has a better valuation to Autodesk. Yeah, uh, probably not a lot of people know about the company yet compared to Autodesk. Um, so yeah, I'm up about twenty one percent there, which is pretty good. That's where I've got my biggest return. Oh, did I miss Tattoo Chef? I missed Tattoo Chef, didn't I? Yeah, how did I miss that? Yeah, so that's my biggest holding. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube about Tattoo Chef, so you can go check to check out those videos. Um, yeah, so up twenty one percent, and literally this is just starting. Um, I think it's probably uh, 
I have about 2,500, yeah, invested in Tattoo Chef. So you have made about an extra 500 quid. So uh, that's taking me up to three grand. So yeah, it's pretty good. I think that's where most of my gains in the overall um, portfolio came from. And that's last one is speculation. Uh, you got switchback energy, you know, um, up about 44% there as well. You got Dropbox, I'm up about, you know, 21%. I think that was pretty much spared on by the fact that there's a rumor that Oracle want to actually might, you know, want to buy Dropbox, which is fair. Um, and you got Smart Direct Club. I did a lot of people, I think this company gets hate for some people on from the youtube community they issued a lot as free shares basically but i don't think it's a bad company i actually you know the only company i can think that does something similar is a line which comes up with the product and visa line i really give these guys do the same thing and a line is really really good in terms of what well, they turn a profit um and they're basically making the re increasing their revenues every year these guys, Smart Direct, haven't turned a profit yet. They're a much smaller company. But I think over time, I think they'll be quite, um, just with good management, they'll be they'll be okay. And I see the stock stock price going up, to be honest. So I think it's one that's undervalued. Well, it was undervalued at some point. Um, I think it's gone up a bit now. So um, but I'll be watching it anyways. Um, yeah, so that's basically the whole portfolio, I believe. Um, for those that don't know, Free Trade have released a new, um, a new update or a new feature. Uh, it's called uh, Pi Library. That's it. And essentially, you know, people just can you can share your your Pi now. It's almost like, and if you click on a person's Pi, you can actually copy their Pi. I've not used it yet, so I'm not too sure how it works. I guess we can try and see copy what happens. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. So yeah, he's a famous YouTuber. Well, I don't know if he's famous. He's a famous YouTuber, but he's got a YouTube channel. I know his channel. I follow him. So uh, he gives pretty good advice and stuff. And he's uh, I like him because he sticks to what he knows. And he, yeah, he's he's got he's got, a, he's got a focus of how he wants to invest, and uh, he sticks to it. So and it works for him basically, especially when the market recovered. Um yeah, so yeah. Oh jeez. Okay, that's fair enough. So yeah, it's um, it's quite cool actually. If you just if you want to be one of your favorite YouTubers, it kind of works like eToro, except without saving. I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. So that's that I think. So yo yeah, well, guys, you know I've been doing this for a while, and you know I've not really had any. I never had a free share to be honest with you. So uh, obviously I don't be very consistent with it. But I'll leave my um trading to you one to um free share link in the description below uh please obviously have a look and um if you want to join trading to want to you just have to sign up i'll get a free share you get a free share you know uh yeah and just just see how things go all right it's been a pleasure um this video is a bit long but i've talked you through all my stocks and uh hopefully we'll just keep this going from now on okay all right take care guys have a good evening and um yeah stay blessed bye